Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. This is a quick tour of my CCIE home lab. Um, I designed this lab to study using INEs, uh, CCIE routing and switching, 5.0 uh, lab topology and study materials. Uh, so I'll give you a quick tour here of what I got going. Um, down here at the bottom of the rack we've got a uh, Catalyst 2950. Just use that for uh, management purposes, connecting to my home network. Um, my terminal server connects to that guy. A few other little things. Um, next, I've got a Cisco 2511RJ. That's my access server. Um, I'll show you that. That allows me to uh, connect remotely to all of my physical hardware here, my switches. Um, I can turn that into the access server and then access the console port of any of these switches, which is nice. Um, anytime I'm changing between configs, I don't have to have IP connectivity to any of my switches. I can do it through the um, through the access server. That way, I have out of band management to my devices. Um, then, for the actual lab hardware, I've got two 3550s, um, two 3560s. This is exactly what INE recommends currently. Then this guy here is a um, Catalyst 3750. This isn't actually part of the INE topology, but this is a breakout switch. What this allows is for um, my virtual routers that are running in GNS3. Um, they connect uh, to the cloud there on the screen. That is the um, Ethernet card in my Linux desktop computer here. Um, the connection from that is a .1Q trunk. Um, so that's this wire here. This carries all my VLANs. Um, and then each of these ports here on this breakout switch uh, break out the VLANs, um, which allows me to have just one connection going back to my GNS3 box. Um, some other solutions you'll see will use quad NICs. They'll use like three or four of them. So you'll have like 12 cables going back from your switches to your GNS3 box. Um, this is the alternative to that. All of those VLANs are, are trunked, uh, aggregated there on that one wire. Um, what this allows is for my switches here that are part of my INE topology uh, to, to be able to connect to individual routers here that are virtualized. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty handy. Um, next up I've got an APC. Uh, this is an AP9211. This is an IP-based PDU. Uh, allows me to control power to all my devices here in the rack remotely. Um, so if I'm on the road somewhere, I can log in from home. Got port forwarding set up on my home router, so I can log into this guy. It's got a web interface on it, and then I can turn on all the, um, the power to all my devices here. Um, above that, this is a uh, 2522 frame relay switch, and then three 1721 uh, routers here. Um, these last uh, three routers here, well, four, including the 2522, aren't actually part of my topology currently. They were left over from my CCNA studies and I was gonna include them in my CCIE rack. Currently I'm um, using the routers in GNS3 for frame relay. Um, my plan was maybe to use this for frame relay, um, but it uh, is gonna be a little bit complicated and I decided just to move forward with my studies for now. But I may, may implement those with the virtual topology here at a later date. Um, then I got my laptop here just for some miscellaneous management. I'll show you the, um, the PDU here. This is pretty handy. Um, so again, like I said, I can turn on, um, turn on my devices remotely here just through this web interface. So I'm going to tell it to turn on all the ports. Um, I'll hit apply here and it fires up everything. So that's real handy. Those are going to take a while to boot, so I'll go ahead and pause the video. Alright, looks like uh, my switches have all booted up here, so I'm going to show you management access through my access server. Now, uh, with the 2511, it does not have a built-in uh, Ethernet interface. Correction, it does have an Ethernet interface, but it's not the RJ45 uh, connection. It's a it's an AUI port, so you have to get one of these AUI transceivers. These can be had 
very cheaply on eBay because I don't think they're really used for much else nowadays. Um, so basically I connect to that through Telnet, through my uh, home network here. Um, you set up um, host mappings on the device and that allows you to reverse Telnet um, on the console port uh, to any of your devices. This would be even more handy if I was running a full physical topology, not just the hybrid topology, but it is still quite useful even for what I'm doing because I can manage my switches, like I said, um, through an out-of-band connection, which is very handy when you're changing topologies around. So I can type in any entry um, from my host mappings here. I'll just do switch one, so I type SW1, hit enter, and then it's going to open the connection, and there's my console port. Um, another thing I did was I bumped up the um, port speed on my on these async ports um, on my terminal server and then on the console port um, the console line on each one of my switches I increased it from the default of 9600 all the way up to 115,200 that way I can do a show run or any kind of extended uh, command that's going to give you a fair bit of output and see it, it scrolls pretty quick just like if you were you know, SSH'd into it, whereas on a normal console connection at 9600, it's going to kind of scroll slowly, and I find that highly annoying. Um, so, and then you could hit Control Shift 6, X, that's going to take you back to your terminal server, and then I could do, you know, Switch 2, that'll open my connection to Switch 2, go back out, I can get to my breakout switch. Again, this is the 3750, so that's extremely handy. Now, as far as cost goes, um, I would estimate, not including the equipment on top, which like I said, that's from CCNA days. Um, I recently bought that PDU, uh, and then the five switches here. Um, spent probably about $1,300 on the switches. Um, all the patch cables um, and a few other accessories so that including then the terminal server and the 2950 down there I'd say probably in the $1600 range um, and then for the, this guy here it's kinda hard um, to estimate because I it, you built it using a lot of leftover parts but um, that box is probably worth I don't know three or four hundred dollars um, the nice thing about running GNS3 on Linux is that it runs quite well compared to running on Windows. Um, this box is just a um, Core 2 Duo E8400. Um, it's got 4 gigs of RAM, it's got a 200 gig hard drive, and then you know the DD, DVD drive. Um, so like I said, it's not a real powerful box, but it, it runs my routers great here, I'll show you. Um, the performance monitor here. So in GNS3 I have all my routers running right now and you can see each core is running at less than 10%. Um, now I'm not doing anything that's just the basic um, layer 2 topology that it's running right now but um, you know if I was running some dynamic routing protocols on there um, or other tasks that you'd be doing in your labs I'm sure that'll jump up but still, considering it's a, you know, not a very powerful box, it's, it's running great. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. So, uh, very impressed with that. Um, to compare, my desktop computer has roughly the same specs. In fact, it's got the exact same uh, amount of RAM and the exact same speed of RAM and the exact same processor, the E8400 Core 2 Duo. And it does not run nearly this well. Um, there's a bug in... GNS3 or Dynamips maybe, um, where when you start all your routers, the idle PC value doesn't kick in until you actually go in um, to the console on each router and go past the step where it says press enter to, uh, you know, press return to get started. Um, after that on Windows, then the idle PC value kicks in and your, your CPU utilization will calm back down. On Linux, nice thing is you can just hit the start button, it'll fire them all up and uh, after about 30 seconds, you'll see both cores about to drop uh, back down to normal where they're at now. So that's very nice. No need to 
to um, tell that into each router and spam your enter key and then enable and, and get into the enable prompt before it'll calm the CPU down. So now I'm going to go ahead and head upstairs. I'll show you my um, how I access my lab from upstairs using a, a tabbed putty uh, configuration. One last thing before I head upstairs here, I want to show you real quick um, how I change configs. Um, you'll see here on GNS3 I've got different .NET uh, files. These are different topology files pointing to different directories that have different configs on them. So these were built um, from the INE uh, base configs for the labs, version 5 like I said. Um, these were built by INE, the configs were, and then they have been modified for use with GNS3 by a couple of different parties. The first one, I believe, was Relativity, uh, Relativity Drive from the INE forums. Um, that individual modified them to work with GNS3. And then uh, Router Gods um, also modified them a little bit more, cleaned them up. Um, and then I took them from there and, and modified them a little bit more to work with my hybrid approach here with the, the physical switches. So. Uh, most of the credit for that stuff is not is not due to me. It's either to real, um, I and E primarily, and then relativity relativity drive and router gods. Um, all of the resources for that can be found on the uh, I and E forums. It's uh, ieoc.com, and um, you'll find a whole bunch of resources on there for for doing this kind of thing. Now this handles the configuration for my virtual routers, but what about for my physical switches? Well, what I've done is um, I've taken the, uh, the configuration from, again, Relativity Drive that was for the switches, and I TFTP'd them up to the flash on all of my switches there. Um, so each one of those switches has 13 different configs stored on it. And I use a tool on my laptop here called Cat Tools. It's made by SolarWinds. It's got a free mode that I'm running in right now that'll allow you to do, I think, 20 different activities, and I've got 19, so um, I should be good to go. I think I've got everything I need. Uh, what this allows me to do is run commands, basically, push them all out simultaneously to my switches. Um, so basically, this allows me to seamlessly uh, reset my rack to different configs as I'm working through the work workbook. So let's say I'm on the um, layer three, you know, just the static routing um, section three on the work workbook volume one, and I'm ready to move on to RIP. Well, in GNS3, I just, um, you know, shut all my routers down, open up a new topology and change over to the RIP topology. And then over here to move my switches over, um, I've got all the same naming convention here for all of the different initial configs, I would locate RIP and then I would uh, click the Run Now button and what that's going to do is send commands over to my switches. Now it's failing horribly because I'm still connected to my uh, to my access server via Telnet here, but I swear it works when when I'm not connected there. What it, what it would basically do is send a series of commands over to my switches saying things like um, erase vlan.dat, um, copy, I've got the file stored in a configs folder on the directory, so it's copy flash colon slash config slash rip for the example in this case. And you can see it rebooting my switches right there. Um, and uh, so I guess it was able to get into a couple of them. And um, so it would copy those configs from the flash, just a, a directory on the flash, and it would copy directly, copy them directly into startup config, and then it would issue the reload command, and you can see the reload in there. So, um, after a couple minutes, then I get confirmation over here that uh, the operation, you know, has finished, and I can I can log in uh, again to my switches here, and they'll be running the top the rip topology that my GNS3 is already running. So, I can reset my rack this way um, move between workbook sections fairly quickly. It's usually about uh, 
you know, three or four minutes and I'm up and running ready to start studying again. So that's very handy, kind of similar to the what you'll see if if you're doing rack rentals. Um, usually the companies, you know, would be doing something similar to this behind the scenes. Of course, they're going to have a custom setup. You're not going to see it because you're just going to see a web interface. But same basic idea for, you know, for resetting the configs on these things. So very handy to have. Uh, it's nice to get this all set up seamless so that when you're studying you don't have to focus on tinkering with your lab, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, it's nice to be able to just have it all work and just be able to focus on, on you know, busting through the workbooks so I can get my CCIE number. So now I'm going to go upstairs and I'll show you uh, the last bit, which is a putty tab configuration. All right, here I am upstairs now. This is where I do most of the work on my labs, um, on the workbooks, now that my home lab is totally set up and I don't have to tinker with it anymore. Um, the best thing for me is to be able to have connections to all my devices in a tapped view. I think most people are the same way. So uh, a lot of people like secure CRT. I do too, um, but it is not free software. Um, Putty is. So if you'd like to go the free route, um, I spent most of my money on on hardware, so I don't have money to spend on secure CRT. Uh, Putty Connection Manager is a great way to utilize Putty in a tabbed configuration. So um, Putty Configuration Manager isn't too difficult to set up. Sorry for the shaky camera here, I'm going to switch hands. Um, once it's set up here, you can see I've got all my devices. I grouped them into folders. Got my backbone routers, um, my management devices, all the routers, and then all the switches. Nice thing to do here is you can just right click on a folder and you can launch the connection to everything in that folder. So I'm going to launch it. Backbone routers, all my management, routers one through six, and all my switches. So you can see up here I've got this nice tab view. Um, and then press enter key a couple times and boom, there's router one. Alt tab between windows. I'm sorry, that was backbone one. There's backbone two. Backbone three, control tab, switches you between windows. Also had a um, script set up, so my access server requires a username, so you can see it put that information in, automatically put me to an elevated command prompt. So just control tab between all my devices, and here they are. Uh, here's the routers. So this is directly telnetted to the Dynamips uh, box. Router 1 through 6. There's switch 1. This telnets uh, to my access server on a, the spe uh, specified async port. Um, and there everything is. So nice tabbed view just to switch between my devices, no problem. I'll show you real quick what it takes to uh, configure the connection. So basically you put in the IP address of your access server. This is my 2511 telnet and then the port number is, is um, whatever async port that individual device is connected to. So you'll see um, those numbers are slightly different for switch one versus switch two and so on. Um, same type of thing for the routers. This host is actually the GNS3 box and then the port again uh, you can retrieve that just by hovering over the router in GNS3 and it'll tell you what the console port is. So usually it starts out R1 is 2001, R2 is 2002. You know, whatever order you drag them on to the topology, uh, the first one's going to be 2000 or 2001. So uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.